Hello and welcome back to Settlement Survival. I say welcome back because I've already created a video on this before and uh, it was just to announce that the game was coming out, but now it has released. Yes, it has released into early access on Steam. And this video is kindly sponsored by Gleamer Studio. And if you'd like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. It already has 91% positive reviews on Steam. And I'm extremely pleased to see that because let's face it, they deserve it. It is a fantastic, very polished experience. And this is my new city or my new town that I have been working on over the past couple of hours, actually, because obviously my previous one, that was more in the demo. So now this is the, the full version of the early access period of the game. And well, I'm, I'm doing okay right now. I'm doing okay. The only thing that I'm not doing very well is I decided that it would take a long time, or should we say I decided that I would take a long time to construct a tailor's workshop. That was a mistake on my part. Can't believe that it took me so long to construct one of those, but it did. And uh, yeah, now we're in a bit of a spot of bother because a lot of my citizens are now cold. So hopefully they are... Um, Hopefully they're not going to suffer from that for too much longer because I now have a tailor up and running. I've also now started to construct a school and I left this little tutorial message up here because I wanted to highlight this as being a very important point. So if you are new to the game and you're wondering how can I generate more research points? How can I get better and faster progress in terms of unlocking new technology? Well schools are a really good way to do that because as you see here this is our developmental stage right here at the moment we are level four and we are going to be getting another development point relatively soon now i've gone all over the place with this particular city i've basically unlocked a wide variety of different things i have a police station i have house upgrades i have clean water I should probably get heating, to be honest. As you see here, unlock the building boiler room to heat the buildings in range. That's actually fantastic. But you need steel for this, you see. The best thing that you can do is always take a look at the requirements of a particular building before you spend your research point. Because otherwise you're going to get it, like I did in my previous episode of the game. And you're not going to be able to build it because you don't have the required resources, which is hilarious. Anyway, I do have the ability to, uh, wait a minute, what did I get? I think I got something, there we go, I got the smelter, yes. I actually want to get the smelter because this is going to allow us to process iron and furnace burden, which is another thing that this particular, um, this other building creates, this thing. It unlocks the factory to create the furnace burden, which turns timber and coal into that resource. And if you then unlock smelting, which I think we're going to do now, let's do that. Then I'm going to be able to build steel or to create steel. And that's going to be extremely, extremely useful because that's going to then enable me to unlock a wide variety of more advanced buildings. And it's just going to generally be a great time for everyone. So yes, I also have an advanced blacksmith that I'm going to be getting as well. But that, of course, requires steel to construct to begin with. All right, so there's the smelter. Now you have to find a place to put it. I've already expanded across the river here. I generally like to place my, my main buildings relatively close to the river. And I personally feel like that really helps quite a bit uh, with its... Um, with its general flexibility and versatility because you're then going to be able to use the river to trade with various ships that come along and you're also going to be able to fish if you want to and so on. Now the one problem I'm having right now is the fact that I do not have enough citizens. I, I know it may seem kind of weird, right? <laughs> I mean, I have 30 of them, but I don't have enough citizens to be able to create things. For example, I don't have enough um, I don't have enough workers. That's basically it. I don't have enough workers. So if I if I select it here, you can see the numbers overlaid on all of these buildings here. And I mean, yeah, sure, I could probably fire one of the builders and then they could take up another job. So for example, I could make them into a distiller or something like that, or I could make them raise uh, the geese over here. And I think I will do that. Let's let's make them 
raise the geese. I have two different uh, pastures in my town at the moment. One is raising pigs and the other one is raising geese. And I'm actually hoping that I might be able to get buffalo at some point as well. And you can see here that we are actually getting births. Births and, and children are being created, but it is just a case of getting them educated and having them grow because at the moment they are just children and I don't know uh yeah they are very much underage let me actually just see can I tell what their actual age is it seems like I can't tell or tell what their age is but I can only hope that they have a an accelerated rate of um of growth you know so we don't have to wait you know 15 16 17 years for them to be able to mature but i would assume that that won't be the case at least we can cross our fingers and hope that won't be the case anyway yes we also have a logging camp going on over there we also have another marketplace if we want to expand in that's in that in that direction because you need a marketplace to be able to build houses you see because you can't build houses outside of the marketplace radius so that's something to bear in mind. So I thought I might expand over in this direction because I don't have that much space anymore, as you can see right here, because I was at the time rather unaware that you do need to build within the, um, the confines of the marketplace. So I thought, OK, well, you know, an expansion is probably going to be pretty good in this direction. Seems pretty logical to assume that that's going to be a good idea. Anyway, I do also have luxury houses, as you see here, but you're going to need some very, well, uh, rarer. You're going to need rarer construction materials, which I currently do not have. And there's the school. Fantastic. Okay. So the school is now built. So I'm going to be removing one of the farmers, I suppose, and then they are going to be taking over as the, um, as the teacher. And hopefully that's going to work out uh, well for us. We also have the ability to now grow oats as well. So that's also going to be very good because that is a uh, primary food staple for us too. So I'm happy with that. And apart from that, hmm, well, what what else can we do? Well, we can we can uh, collect some more things. I'm actually going to just, just get everything in this area right here. And we probably want to get everything in this area as well. And then they're just going to go off and do that. Now, the smelter is almost done, as you can see right here. We just need a, we need some more clay. I actually did build one of these, which is a sand pit. And this can actually create sand, or not create, create sand, but it can gather sand from the river. And that's also another reason why it would be a good idea to, you know, maybe build your main, main hub next to a river. And it also has the ability to provide you with clay as well. So that's also pretty fantastic. Anyway, I'm actually going to be switching what it makes into clay now. Because as you see, we have 466 sand, which is quite a lot. And we have 100 clay. So it would probably be a good idea to get a little bit of something, something there. We also have, have the ability to mine iron ore. And this is a big mine pit. Now, this mine pit can be upgraded a very substantial amount, an extreme amount, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you that if I can, because where is that? I always I always lose where I where I can go. I think it is. Uh, it is this and then I can go here. Yes, there we go. Yeah, this is it. So basically, if I go here, and then I go here, I'm going to then have the ability to unlock the mine deposit, which has no limit. So you can literally mine with 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 reckless abandon, basically, you know, we we dug deep and we, we you know, you know, what that what, what's that quote from Lord of the Rings? I don't know. But yes, that is what I'm talking about there. And that's actually something that I would love to be able to get. But at the moment, we only have one miner available for this area anyway. So yeah, it's not really not really going to help me out too much. Ah, we have no farmers for the orchard, unfortunately. Hmm. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. No repairmen assigned either. Hmm. We're going to have to do something about that. Okay. Ah, let's see. Uh, Forester, uh, let's get... No, we don't want a brewer. We want a repair... Oh, we don't have any repairmen? Oh, I... Oh, yeah, I need to do that, actually. I need to do that uh, relatively fast. I need to build 
a repair station or whatever it's called. Where is that? It's around here somewhere. There, the repair shop, yes. Now this is something that I definitely should have built a long time ago, but as you know, there's just so much choice in this game that generally I uh, I like to choose the, uh, the, the slightly, uh, you know, the fun things to build first. Like for example, the clinic and the church, because the church actually increases happiness by a massive scale. It really is really amazing to get early on. And yeah, the well is the thing that is damaged at the moment. Herb reserves are also low. Okay, I'm going to have to do something about that. So let's get a gathering station. Uh, wild vegetables generally grow near mature trees. Okay, so I guess I'm going to be building a gathering station round about here then. And there we go. Okay, I've also been attempting to expand my roads as well, but obviously my citizens are a little bit slow with expanding over in this direction, and they haven't even built all the roads in this area either because they're just generally running around and trying to get everything done as much as possible. Let's go to 10 times speed. My health is really bad at the moment, mainly because I think we are going to need something else. We're going to need like a bathhouse, or we're going to need to unlock soap, or we're going to need to get something that is going to increase our health levels. And that's what we have to try to do. My tailor is doing a good job though, as we can no doubt see, but we don't have any more leather, unfortunately. So I will have to build clothes out of alpaca wool, by the looks of things. That will have to be the thing that we now use for that. Okay, yeah, that seems pretty good. Do we have any more? No, we don't have any more points just yet, but hopefully soon we will be able to. But yes, generally I have found that um, it is quite difficult to expand in such a way with your citizens. I think I may have made a slight error in, um, in building too many of these logging camps and, uh, and gathering stations and things like that because I just don't have enough um, oh, there's a student. Oh, fantastic. Great. Oh, that's that's really nice. But yes, I think I might have built too many of these and expanded a little bit too fast because you don't need to expand fast in this game. You can take it easy, you know? You can take it easy. And uh, generally, yeah, that kind of, uh, kind of shot me in the foot a little bit. So that is obviously a bit of a problem. Anyway, let's take a look at these statistics here. I need to do something. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? Considering this is damaged right now, I'm going to fire him and I'm going to put him as the repair person because then he can go around and do whatever he wants to do and he can repair some things. Sounds like a good idea. And the more people that are, um, shall we say, in education, the faster they can become adults, hopefully. And then as a result, we will then be able to, you know, finally expand our workforce. I know it makes me sound like a bit of a slave driver, but it is true. That's the kind of thing that we have to do to sort of expand and, you know, do the best that we can. Anyway, I'm going to take a look at the uh, the pastures here. Do I have uh, more than one kind of animal? No, I only have two kinds of animals, which is exactly what I'm already doing. We have geese and uh, we have pigs, of course, as I said before. All right, so... The one thing that I'm going to do, we are almost there for the uh, development experience. We almost have enough to be able to spec into something else. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be getting soap. So there's the soap right there. Unlock the soap workshop, which can produce soap. Soap can, you know, can, can increase health. And uh, hopefully we're going to be able to do that quite soon. But uh, yeah, not just yet, unfortunately. We also need more clothes. What's actually going on there? Why are we... Uh Lack of raw materials. Do I not have? I have alpaca wool. As you see right there. I do actually have alpaca wool, but he's not doing it for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Hmm. Maybe the alpaca wool is far away. Maybe it's over here. Is that where the alpaca wool is? Yes. As you see, there it is. Okay. Ah, uh, hmm. I'm actually unsure what I can do about that. I mean, maybe there's going to be someone that will pick it up and take it all the way over here because, I mean, we just don't have any laborers. That's the problem, you see. We have no laborers whatsoever. So that is a bit of an issue, isn't it? Yes, that is a bit of an issue. Okay. So what about just leaving leaving this, and we're going to close the distillery because at the moment the distillery is being basically pointless. 
I'm going to close the big well as well because we already have a reservoir, which is another place where people can get drinking water from. We're going to close the orchard, even though I would love to have some fresh plums. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? And we're also going to close the sawmill while we have the ability to do so. And yeah, I think that's looking pretty good so far. Okay, now let's uh, let's close this, even though the logging camp is going to be very, very useful for us. I'm going to close it. Gathering station's also going to be useful. Oh, I actually built two gathering stations here. Well, I mean, I guess you can't get any worse than gathering a huge amount of stuff, right? I mean, yeah, that's perfectly fine. So the more gatherers we can get, or laborers, the better, because they are the ones that will carry things from place to place. And I'm very much hoping, yes, as you see here, the tailor now has the materials that he needs because we actually created one of those laborers, and that's exactly what happened. The AI is very good in this game as well. I feel like they prioritize exactly perfectly what they need to do. And they generally tend to have a, a good understanding of what should be done. And you don't really need to be like, oh, what, what are you doing there? You know, you're, you're just dilly-dallying all over the place, you know? But yeah, you don't have to say that at all. Uh, it seems like they are doing a great job with that. So I'm, I'm very pleased. And we have a huge amount of buffalo here as well. I, I actually wonder, do I have a hunting camp nearby? Yes, I do have a hunting cabin right there, but I don't have any hunters, hilariously enough, as you see right there. Yes, that's great, isn't it? Ah, uh, oh well, never mind, never mind. We're, we're currently running at 10 times speed, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go away for a little bit, and hopefully by the time we return, I will have the ability to expand even further and we are going to get the soap workshop there we have it and i'm going to build that round about right about here i guess well it seems like our development points are steaming along they really are doing a fantastic job of being gained now that we have a school and i've also found a way that we can create uh, soap. So basically, you can create soap out of beeswax, fat, and blubber. And I don't have any of these, obviously. So what I'm deciding to do is because this is extremely easy for us to get. I don't. Th I think I can get this. I'm. Yeah. Okay. So I could do this if I wanted to. So this. This would require us to have a butcher. I'm not entirely sure what the best of this is, you see, but they are all on the on the on the top line, so it doesn't really matter either way, I guess. So, I'm wondering what I should go for. Oh yeah, also a warehouse would be absolutely fantastic, but I don't really have the opportunity to do that right now. Maybe we should do the butcher because I I don't really do, uh, what, what does this do otherwise? What does the apiary actually do? I think a butcher might be more useful in the end because then we're going to have a barbecue available and a meat feast. That's going to be pretty good for happiness, I suppose. I don't know. And what else do we have here? Groves. Okay. Nursery. Farmers will grow herbs and special crops in the field area. I mean, her mm, that's, looking, that's looking pretty good, actually. I'm going to go for this because I want the, the herb potential. Because herbs are extremely important for health. As you've no doubt seen, there's a bunch of warning messages for me at the moment. Uh, build, ah, I need more herbs, and so on and so forth. Yes, that's, that's going to be the thing. Anyway, I'm thinking we're probably going to build it around about here. And all of my injured citizens will be going over to the clinic, which is perfectly fine. And uh, we have six people currently in education, which is pretty good. And you can see here that our... Research progress is pretty good. We're getting a current output of 20, which is not too bad. I mean, that's I, I, it seems to be going a lot faster than it was before, at least. And I still do not have any more workers. So obviously that's a bit of a problem. But hopefully that will change relatively soon. I can pretty much just pause the soap workshop at the moment. We're going to go for beeswax when we eventually have the ability to construct that. And I'm actually wondering whether I should build another open warehouse. I think I will. I'm going to build one round about here because there might be some things that we can just place right here like beeswax or whatever and maybe some soap when that is ready and then we're going to have a much easier time of things or at least I hope so. Okay so furnace burden at the moment we don't really need any more of that 
So I'm thinking we might actually put this guy on pause. And then he can go off and do whatever else he wants to do. And hopefully he'll he'll actually help us to uh, accomplish what we want. Oh, look at this. It seems like they're actually transferring some stuff over here for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why they're doing that, but okay. I guess if they want to, then that is perfectly fine. But yeah, I, I personally find it extremely enjoyable and satisfying to see how the trees continue growing in the area even though you've chopped them down. So for example, I chopped down this entire area. This was completely bare about, I don't know, about a, a year or two ago. And now boom, look at that. There's a, a whole bunch of trees right there. Same thing with, with the north of the area as well. It's pretty crazy. And then otherwise we're going to get some more stone and iron and all these little things right here. And this is a massive area, by the way. I mean, it may seem like it's not that large, but it is massive. It really is. And obviously, the game does give you the opportunity to maintain your town with unlimited sources of these resources eventually, once you have enough you know, development points and unlocked these things in the mining tree, for example, where you're able to actually use this and it can be mined without any limit. And it's the same thing with with this unlock the quarry, which can be mined without limit. So that's that's super, super good. And um, yeah, generally, you're going to be able to have a grand old time with that. So I'm very much looking forward to getting it. And hopefully, yes, Rudolph or Randolph, not Rudolph, but Randolph is actually working at the apiary right here. And hopefully he has. Wow, uh, they're filling this up way too fast, in my opinion. But yes, OK, they are actually filling that up quite a bit. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, let's start the soap workshop, and I'm actually going to go over to the job screen, and we we need to we need to get, let someone go here, so we're going to tell them to go somewhere else. So what about the smelter? Smelter is not really necessary at the moment, so let's. Oh, actually, it is it is kind of useful, but we have 130 of it already. I think we have more than that actually. Yeah, we have 150. So we're just going to pause the smelter for the for the moment right now, and then hopefully we can get that person, Arthur, to do the soap. And <laughs> I was not expecting them to transfer all of this stuff over here. So I guess I'm actually going to have to go for another another warehouse round about there. Yeah, they transferred a whole bunch in there for some reason. Okay, so what else do we have? We have nothing here that is actually helpful. Oh, the, oh, the, the geese. Oh, okay, yes. The geese pasture is creating a lot of a lot of stuff over here. And you can also see that beeswax is starting to come in. Honey is also starting to come in. Well, what, what, what does honey uh, get used for? Used in food production and ointments. It's a rough food, long time consumption. It's harmful to health. Oh, yes. Yes, we know that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, now we can actually start getting some soap. So hopefully he's going to do that. Lack of raw materials at the moment. Well, yeah, I mean, at the moment, yes, but no doubt... You will have some in due time, sir. Don't worry about that. And I'm very... Oh, look at this. Look at this. We've even... Oh, look at that. We've got more people in education. Fantastic. Great. And a sand digger. Do we need a sand digger any further? Probably not, right? I have 408 clay. So let's pause this. Let Katie go off and do whatever else she wants to do now. And hopefully... Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that she'll just stay as a laborer for the moment. And hopefully, um, hopefully she'll just go and do what is necessary right now, which is to transfer some stuff. Uh, ah, yes, we also need to take a look at this. Ah, we have some leather now, so hopefully the tailor can start using the leather instead. And hopefully someone is actually going to transfer the beeswax into the soap workshop so we can actually get some soap up and running too. So that's going to be super nice as well and i think i have yes i do have a development point so what am i going to spec it into well that's the point should i spec it into the grove well i kind of want to do that but i really really want to get the nursery and i don't have enough points for that just yet so it kind of doesn't make sense for me so i'm thinking maybe we want to go for something else what about salt maker this is uh, you get the curing workshop which is used to process fish or meat and salt into salted meat or salted fish Huh. 
that's really useful. That is super, super useful. But I, I again, I don't have enough, um, well, basically citizens to be able to make this work. And most of the, um, most of the things here, I'm not going to have enough people to be able to accomplish. So I'm hopeful that maybe I can get something that is a little bit less... Mm, a, a little bit less of a commitment, shall we say. So I'm thinking maybe a bathhouse. That's pretty good. Bathhouse might be really fantastic. Let's go for the bathhouse right now. Yeah, I'm thinking bathhouse because that's going to help their, um, their health a lot. It really is going to make a big difference. So let's just build that round about here. This is a really bad position for it, but I'm going to build it right there. And then we're going to get a nice little road. <laughs> Uh, look at this. Can you imagine going to a bathhouse that is literally in a back alley somewhere? Yes, me neither. Okay, so let's just do that. There we go. And I need laid stone? Oh no! Okay, yeah, I also need linen. I do not have linen. Okay, well that's obviously a bit of a problem. But we are starting to now create soap. So that's really nice. That means that we will finally be able to increase our HP a little bit as well. And that's going to help our citizens. But here's the thing. My one tip. If you are going to purchase the game. Or if you've already purchased it. My one tip. Is literally. Just take your time. That's it. Just take your time. There is no rush in this game whatsoever. The only thing you need to rush for is to make sure that you have clothing. Make sure you have fuel reserves. And that's pretty much it. Apart from food obviously. That's it. Those are the only three, maybe four things, if there's a fourth one that I've forgotten to mention. But yes, generally, those things are the most important. And if you can get those, if you have an overabundance of those, you're perfectly fine. And then you can slowly start expanding once you've built a school. Because the way it is for me right now, having not enough workers to be able to increase the expansion of your town... It's not good. It is not good. I, I, I made a mistake about that. I definitely made a mistake about that. But that just furthers my resolve. And it makes me, oh, yeah, you know, it makes me like, oh, okay, what can I do? You know, what can I do to increase my HP? What can I do to, to help my, the, the, you know, the happiness of my citizens? And, and generally, what can I help with the, the, the various technologies here? You know, how can I help myself with that? And that's generally what I'm trying to do now. But yes, hopefully these, these people are going to be done learning quite soon. And then we'll be able to do something there too. And otherwise, you are eventually going to be able to dig rivers. And there's also a sandbox mode as well, by the way. This is the standard mode that I'm playing right now, which requires you to unlock all the technology. But if you don't want to unlock all the technology and you just want to build your very own town then you don't even need to worry about that. I'm actually going to just save the game right now. And then I'm going to go back to the main menu because I'm going to show you the various modes just real quick before the episode ends. And if I go for new game here, you can see this is the standard mode and this is the sandbox mode. So in sandbox mode, you start with all the technology and you can grow as freely as you want. In addition, you'll be able to dig rivers and change the terrain. And you can also change the map size as well. So you have small, medium, large. You can also change the difficulty from normal, medium, extreme, what? Okay, yes, easy, normal, hard, and extreme. I have no idea what is extreme, but okay, that's gonna be kind of harsh. And then you also have natural disasters. You can turn that on or off. And then you have special, which is basically special buildings that you can, you can build. And you can also turn off unlocking all tech if you don't like that, but you just want a sandbox experience. So you can also do that. And then there's this uh, special special mode called Easter Island. And there's a bunch of other modes that are going to be coming soon. And the Easter Island thing is uh, trees grow slowly on Easter Island. So structures that grow trees are disabled in this scenario. Easter Island is a sea island, so land trade is disabled. And the interval between sea trading stations is increased. Some technologies are already unlocked at the beginning of the game. Easter Island is densely uh, forested, so the construction of fields and pastures will be uh, probably more difficult, potentially. I, I can't scroll down here for some reason, but there you go. That 
is the extent of the mode so far, but just think about how much you're going to be able to do in just, I mean, literally, I've been playing for how many hours right now? Four, four hours, three hours or something like that. And that is just in the standard mode. And look at my town. My town is, is barely expanded, you know, so it is a whale of a time. And I'd highly recommend checking it out through the link in the description. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.